the last objective is using a confidence interval to make a conclusion from a two-sided test about a population parameter, in this case, the population mean. So you, really, we've talked about this before. You should remember there's a link between two-sided tests and confidence intervals. A 95% confidence interval relates to a significance level of uh, 0.05. A 99% confidence interval relates to a 1% significance level. And a 90% confidence level relates to a 10% significance level. So it's pretty simple. It's if the null falls within your interval, then you would fail to reject. If the null does not fall within your interval, then that allows you to reject the null because if it doesn't fall within your interval, then you have reason to believe that it may not be true. So at the Hawaii Pineapple Company, the mean weight of the pineapples harvested from one large field was 31 ounces last year. A different irrigation system was installed in this field after the growing season. Managers wonder if this change will affect the mean weight of future pineapples grown in the field. To find out, they select a weight, they select and weigh a random sample of 50 pineapples from this year's crop. State an appropriate pair of hypotheses for a significance test in the setting. Be sure to define the parameter of interest. Here's our hypotheses and the parameter we're testing. And the reason it's equal to 31 is because they told us that in the previous year, it was 31 ounces. The mean was 31 ounces. So with the new irrigation system, they want to know, has it changed? So the alternative is, is it different this year after they've implemented this new irrigation system? So mu is the true mean weight of all the pineapples grown in the field this year with the new irrigation system. Check the conditions before before performing a test in part A. So we need to see, um, was a random sample selected? And yes, they said that it was, sample size of 50. And the 10% condition, it's safe to assume that 50 is less than 10% of all the pineapples that were grown this year. And then the large normal condition, easiest one because sample size is 50, central limit theorem applies. So all three conditions will be met in this case. It's always the best when the sample size is greater than 30 because then we don't have to draw the box plot. We don't have to type anything in the calculator. We can just quickly move on to the next one. So here, a 95% confidence interval for the mean weight of all pineapples grown in the field this year is from 31.255 to 32.616. Based on this interval, what conclusion would you make for the test of the hypotheses in part A at a 5% significance level. So we're looking to see, does the null fall within this interval? And 31 does not fall in this interval. So since the alpha level is 5%, that means we're relating it to a 95% confidence interval, which they've given it to us here. And since 31 does not fall in this interval, then we have reason to believe that it's not 31. So we are going to reject their hypothesis that it's equal to 31. Again, since 31 doesn't fall in the interval, then we reject. We, we have convincing evidence that the true mean weight of pineapples grown this year is not 31 ounces. So if we did a one sample t-test, we would arrive at the same result using the same sample. Finally, can we conclude that the different irrigation system caused a change in the mean weight of the pineapples produced? Explain your answer. So no, we still can't. Um, draw this cause and effect relationship. It was not a randomized comparative experiment, so we cannot infer causation. It's possible that other things besides the irrigation system changed from last year's growing season. Maybe the weather was different, uh, and that's why the, the mean weight of the pineapples was different. So we can only have a cause and effect relationship if we've done a complete, if we've done a randomized experimental design. Again, we can only cause uh, infer cause and effect if we've done a randomized experiment. And uh, we've now finished up our two different types of inferences for population means, a confidence interval, and a significance test. They both can be used to evaluate claims about population means.